How are we doing? Did we get it? There we are. Hey there, friends. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time it might be where you are out there. Welcome back to the live stream. My name is Jeff Fritz. Today, today's another live with C, learning C Sharp with C Sharp Fritz. How you doing there? I go by the screen name C Sharp Fritz on all the places. GitHub, Twitch, YouTube, Twitter, all the places. How you doing there, chat room? It's so good to be with you again. We're going to spend some time learning about Blazor this week. We're going to dig in and talk about components. We're going to talk about layout and how we can interact between those different things here today. We're not going to get quite into other topics um, like state management or security. We're not going to get into those today. They are planned. They are going to be a little bit further down in, uh, in the weeks ahead. We'll get into those. Let me say hello to the chat room. There's lots of folks hanging out here. And of course, <clears throat> if you out there, you watching the recording, you're talking to us from the future. This is Jeff from January 31st. But if you're in the future and watching this, we're about to have a Q&A segment. I, I drop chapters along the recording here just below. If you're watching the recording, you don't want to listen to the Q&A. You don't want to go through and follow along with what our chat is going to be participating in. That's fine. You can go ahead and skip ahead to the segment where we're going to actually start working with and doing our teaching exercises here. But let me go to the chat room. Let me bring them in. Hello there, chat room. They're right over here, and I've got a timer there to make sure we, we don't get too carried away with our Q&A segment. Lots of folks here. Oh, my goodness. Um, <laughs> it looks like folks. Uh, is it Kleber and Carl? Uh, I've been watching my videos over on the C Sharp Fritz channel where I've been wearing a, uh, a hat jacket. Um, and uh, talking about minimal APIs over there. So, hope you tune into those. Hope you enjoy those. It's Litany's here on Twitch. Diego, hello to you in Argentina. Chris Jones on Twitch. How you doing? Uh, here to learn all the things. Look at that. I Legion, hello. Blazor support. SAS. Uh, yes, Blazor supports SAS. Jamal on YouTube, it does. Um, Patricio is here in, from Germany. Uh, Harry, uh, Harry Nada, how you doing? Harry Nod, I, I'm, I'm not sure if that's how you pronounce that. Uh, CTI Geek is here from Virginia on Twitch. Do you enjoy the music? Thank you. Um, yes, SAS is a precompiler language for generating CSS. You can use that as long as you precompile before you start referencing it in Blazor. Works just fine out there. Um, do, 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 do. Using Tailwind with Blazor, terrific. Glad to see that. Alexander, hello. Shara Fudin. Hey, how's it going? Guled. <clears throat> Jarvish. How you doing there? Uh, Trail Mix over on Twitch. How's it going? Good afternoon to everybody. Good morning. Good afternoon. Um, War to R. Hello. Uh, to, to, to Ahmed from London on YouTube. Thanks for the great service. Well, thank you for tuning in. It wouldn't, I wouldn't be putting this on if there weren't folks tuning in and having a good time with us here. Uh, how you doing there, Legere? Um, Marvin Klein music. Can't wait for the PC2 announcement. PC2 announcement. Um, I, I, I think that's outside of the scope of what I'm looking at here. Hello, uh, Jamal's from uh, Morocco. Eddie Dre on Twitch. Uh, continuing scrolling here. Legere's from Africa. The Ivory Coast. Awesome. Welcome in. Um, Sharafuddin would like to propose Blazor for their enterprise system. But they keep saying nobody knows Blazor and resource challenges. Blazor C Sharp. You know people who know C Sharp. It's C Sharp and HTML. Um, and we're going to see more about that today. Um, T Jake, how's it going there? Uh, good day. Could I dive into publishing Blazor WebAssembly solutions? Some of your projects are about 60 meg when using Brotly. Um, or when you publish, it should tree shake and link and and get that down much much smaller what happens when you run dotnet publish how how are you looking at it as far as size of that hit tab how's it going there david on youtube asks in terms of dotnet maui how will we be able to access sensors and cameras using the likes of blazer um that's a better question for my colleague james montemagno i understand and i haven't tried it yet i understand that there's a bridge that you can reach through to be able to interact with those things they're exposed from the Blazor web view that you're that you can tap into it. Haven't done it yet. Haven't done the research on it. But there's 
there is a bridge there, is what I understand. Uh, is that Gemini? How you doing there in Moscow? Bellencore on Twitch. I be Wacko Freak is here on Twitch as well. Um, Paul asks, uh, hey Jeff, MVVM and Blazer must have or better not. Um, if that works for you, that's fine. I I wouldn't get lost in it. I wouldn't. Blazer is already pretty MVVM. You're adding some other things on top of it so you get. A little bit more MVV, MVVM structure, that's fine. You can do that. I, I'm not sold on that um, as a need to have. Let me get some music playing here in the background before I go through more of the Q&A coming in. Um, where'd it go? I'm going to play the Stream Beats, Stream Beats Synthwave playlist. This is a bunch of groovy songs that are a little bit techno. That uh, and all... Um, instrumental. You can check them out at streambeats.com. They've got playlists there. They're DMCA free, royalty free. You can listen to them on YouTube, Twitch, Facebook, wherever you may be broadcasting. Um, I, there's playlists for Apple Music, Amazon Music, or even Spotify like I'm listening to here. Check it out at streambeats.com. Thank you so much to Harris Heller for making this music available for us to kind of groove along to today. Luger is using Blazer Telerik UI for Blazer. Awesome. I, I I recommend folks check out some of those commercial libraries, whether it's Telerik, uh, Sync Fusion, Dev Express, Infragistics, Grape City. They've all got some great product out there that's going to get you productive in Blazer quickly. It's Litany with a question. What would I recommend as initial reading watching to get started with Blazer as someone with minimal C-sharp experience? You're going to want to get a little bit of C-sharp underneath of you. Just like you're going to want to get a little bit of HTML underneath you before you dive in. Um, there are learning um, there, there are learning courses to get you started with C-sharp. Over on the dot, dot .net site, click the Learn tab up at the top. We've got all kinds of resources there for you. Check those out. Um, the beginning of this series, where I go through and I teach the basics of C-sharp, That'd be a good place to go as well. Otherwise, this is a great place to jump in and and get started. If you know a little bit of C-sharp, we can get you pointed in the right direction here to get folks successful. David's watching from Belfast. How's it going there? Matt Kish with a question on YouTube. Is it normal for Blazor exceptions to not break and pop up in Visual Studio, excuse me, when running in debug mode? Depends. How are you launching it? Have only been seeing reported as messages and output, which can be missed. Depends on how you're running it. If you're running, when you launch and debug the Blazor WebAssembly application from Visual Studio, you need to be attached to your browser. Um, and you might not be uh, completely attached there properly with your debugger. So... Um, Paradise Fallen on YouTube says, Hello, be cool to see XAML guides. I'm not going to be getting into XAML for a little bit here, but I, I need to get some XAML education myself. So once I have that down, we'll talk about it. Um, Marvin Klein Music's created their entire ERP within a Blazor web app. Very cool. Rodrigo's here from Brazil. Very good to chat. Well, welcome, Rodrigo. Good to see you. Patrizio, uh, talking about Fluxor to some of the other folks in chat. Greetings to you, Carlos in Mexico. Hello to Guillermo in Argentina. Uh, Mossico on Twitch has a question. How's the .NET environment for Mac? I'm about to migrate to Mac OS. I'm worried a bit when it comes to .NET. When you're building for web applications, when you're building for cross-platform applications, if you're going to be building with .NET MAUI in the future, if you're working with Xamarin now, you're going to have a great experience with those. Um, Visual Studio for Mac, Visual Studio Code, both have uh, very good support on Mac. You're going to be very productive. And the dirty secret is a lot of folks on the .NET team actually make .NET. They actually program the .NET tools on a Mac. So don't tell anybody I said that. Okay. Um... David on YouTube asks, do you really need interfaces and services that this day and age? Just curious on opinion. 
Introducing services and interfaces inside of your application architecture helps make things a little bit more flexible. They help introduce a little bit of change management for you so that as you evolve your application, as you change and, and replace services and, and swap out how you interact with things, you can replace those features easily. That being said, you don't need them. It's a question of how much do you want to architect those places where you might want to be able to swap things out in the future. And if you want to do unit testing, if you want to be able to test things, you want to be able to swap out dependencies, you want to be able to not include references to a database and all your database production interaction code when you write your tests, you want to write an interface where you can fake that out. You introduce a mock so that you can test to ensure that your code is working properly before it actually touches the database. So you don't need that. However, if you want to engage in these better practices to write code that is more reliable, more has more repeatable interactions, you want to be able to maintain it easier and more loosely connect things, you're going to want to introduce interfaces and services. I'm glad you enjoyed the music. Uh, da, 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 da. Hit Tab on YouTube says, I'm new to in the C-Sharp community. I love the organization of MVC and MVVM architectures, but I'm still learning. That's great. Welcome. Um, Hit Tab continues, I'm a little behind because I'm still working with Xamarin and .NET Core. Thanks for what you do. You're not behind at all. Those are uh, very much production supported. You're going to get support with those frameworks, and we've gotten a migration path forward for you so that you can continue to be successful. So Alexander on YouTube asks, using Blazor, can we work with a webcam? Yes, you can. Um, my colleagues, um, Brady Gaster and Dan Roth, um, have put together demos that show off using a webcam to stream content um, in both directions from and, and with a browser. Chris, uh, Christoval uses Mudblazer. Fantastic. There's another open source framework that you can use. Jose asks, is there a certification for Blazor? No, there is not. Um, we, we don't offer certifications for, for our uh, developer technologies. You'll see certifications for Azure, but we don't have certifications that we're currently maintaining for, for C Sharp, Visual Studio, F Sharp, Visual Basic. It's Litany, uh, trying to get on board, try blah, blah, blah. Awesome. Um, <laughs> Joe on YouTube says, go Bengals. For those of you outside the States, maybe you don't follow uh, American sport. Um, it, this weekend was the, the semifinals for American football. We call the National Football League here in the States. Um, the Cincinnati Bengals, the Los Angeles Rams qualified for the finals. You might know it better as the Super Bowl. And that's in two weeks, and and that's usually a pretty good, pretty good party for a lot of homes here in in the states, and I'm, I'm sure other folks out there. Um, do, 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 do. how can we have different layouts on different pages? Asks Mir uh, on YouTube. There's a layout directive you can place at the top of the page, and I'll show you how we can do this when we get into the project. Uh, just swap out that layout directive and point to different layout files and it'll work just fine for you um let me see here scrolling 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 hello mir in india uh crip lord on youtube asks i asked the other day when blazer might get multi-threading support you said when wasm support it check this appears to or be supported already using the p-thread argument during compilation I haven't tried it that's something supported right now in blazer um, I am, I, you can do like background threads and I'm doing that on, um, website that I'm building. Um, da, 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 da. um, yeah, they're long running async background, uh, processes do work, but it, it is single threaded. You're, you're going to run into single thread limitations. So what the team's plans are on that, I at this point, I don't know. 
Um, but the initial feedback that <laughs> that I remember running with was, we got to wait for WebAssembly to have it first. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Hello to you, uh, Ask in Sri Lanka. Uh, about to migrate to Mac, Musico says, because don't find themselves very productive while on Windows. Hmm. To each their own. Uh, use whatever tools make you happy. That's why we've, we've brought .NET to everywhere. So you can use it and be productive in all the places. How you doing there, Valdis in Latvia? Omar, let's learn, some, yes, let's learn something new. We shall in about 26 minutes. You don't want to do unit testing, and I hate mocking, says David. Mm, sorry. How you doing there, Bogey? Is it Bogey in India? Hello. Welcome. Um, Marvin asks, what's the main advantage of using a service in Blazor? Why shouldn't I just create a static method within my object? Real easy. When you build components with Blazor, and I'm going to show you how to build components in just a little bit, over at that table over there behind me, um, your Blazor components can be used in several different runtimes. That component's going to present a chunk of user interface, but it can be used in WebAssembly or server-side, like we saw last week. And, coming up, it could be used inside of a Blazor MAUI application, built and deployed on a native uh, runtime. Windows, Mac, Android, iOS. Well, when it's running on those different environments, how you connect and interact with various data points, how you break outside the Blazor sandbox is different. So if you're building a Blazor WebAssembly application and you need to get data from a database, you can't just query the database directly. You're going to want to use an HTTP client so that you can reach out and connect over to some API that runs on a server and handles those queries for you interacting with the database. However, when you use that same component running on a server, you don't want to use HTTP client to interact with the database. You want to actually query the database directly. So we introduce an interface. We introduce a service. By introducing an interface, now we have a service that can run in the browser that uses HTTP client that gets the data in the shape we need. We can use a different service that runs on a web server when we're hosted Blazor server side that fetches the data directly from the database using Entity Framework or other native uh, database client libraries to make those queries themselves. So you have these options and you can swap in. Your component that displays content behaves the same in both instances. It's just interacting with an interface that has the appropriate service supplied, whether it's running on the web browser inside WebAssembly or it's running on the server with Blazor Server. So, your choice, how you want to work with those. Um, or is it our Arjun, the guru, asks, is it a bad practice to create a chain of inheritance for classes? No, not at all. Um, Microsoft doing away with certs, but Microsoft Learn is the best way to get some kudos. Yes. Please don't repeat questions. I've, I, I already get them. I already see them, and all you're doing is delaying me from getting to other folks' questions. Hello to you in Portugal. Is it Gentile? How's it going? Teixeira. Can we bind a different event in the page to trigger on input? For example, instead of bind event on input. Um, you can also take a look at key down um, and on change. You can change those. We'll talk about event binding and, and that probably in the next... It's going to be within the next two weeks. We'll get into more of that stuff. Um, Sarraz on YouTube asks, is there a, a similar way to do validation with Blazor to gRPC? Uh, uh, like validation attributes in model. Um, the validation attributes in the model work in Blazor. So your gRPC service can enforce those um, those validation attributes as well if you build with ASP.NET Core. Um, I haven't done that. I haven't done a gRPC model recently, but it absolutely should work. Zachary asks, favorite ORM to pair with Blazor, Entity Framework, Dapper, etc. Um, well, I work in, I typically work with Blazor on WebAssembly. 
So I'm not using any of those ORMs because I'm working with a, an HTTP client. When I'm on the server, Entity Framework is what I've been, been typically using. Dapper is great when I need to break out of and do something a little bit more complex than just uh, uh, straight one-to-many types of relationships. Hello to you, Habong in Korea. Good to see you. Um, yeah, another... Uh, Genteel, you repeated your question three times. Please, please, please don't repeat your questions. I can see that. Do I recommend a new developer learn Docker? Asks James on YouTube. Um... There's, there's, an, I would learn enough about Docker that you can package a simple application. I wouldn't go crazy with learning how to deploy it all over the place. Learn how to package a simple application. Learn how to deploy on whatever hosting provider you're using that supports Docker. Don't go much further than that. Only, it, there are all kinds of little ways and scripts and things that you can do to optimize how your containers run. Unless you're a DevOps engineer that is packaging and delivering apps, focus on just the things you need to package and get your application running in a container. It's a great set of tools. That's where I would start. If you're interested in it, if it's something that you enjoy, go for it, learn more. But if you're just a web developer trying to ship content, you don't need to, to go deep on it. And learn how to map ports. Learn how to copy in your application. Learn how to get your application building with an SDK container and deploy into another container so that you can always build with code um, and deploy and have a, a fully built and, and minified container that you can ship that's as small as possible. That's about where I would stop. Beyond that is all interesting things that are fun to learn but you won't need as much as just getting it to build and run. Um, hello to you, Jorge in Ecuador. Beginner, is this course going to be good for you? I hope so. Um, shout out to the Fireside Linux cluster at the University of Hull. Uh, eh, University of Hull. How's it going there? Hello. Um, that's from Edward Charles over there on YouTube. Uh, Vadim in St. Petersburg, Russia. How you doing there? Can Blazor applications be packaged in desktop applications? Vadim, check it out when we get to Blazor with .NET MAUI. That's going to be coming out in about three or four months. Um, we will be supporting that using Blazor with .NET MAUI, and you'll be able to take your Blazor application, put it into a MAUI application, build and deploy it on Windows or Mac, and of course, iOS and Android. Danny needs to write a new tool with Framework 461 and WPF. Uh, for now, I don't have any chance to change this. That's okay. But I plan to migrate it to Blazor when my employer has arrived in the present. Good luck to you, Danny. Um, how you doing? Good evening to you, Sharaf, in Egypt. How you doing there? Uh, Rishab. Hello. Hi. Um, Mir, Mir Hussein says some pointers in improving SEO in Blazor WebAssembly Spa. Um, you're going to want to build the best way, to, the easiest way to do it is to build a Blazor application that's hosted on ASP.NET Core and turn on pre-rendering. It'll pre-render content so that the, the ASP.NET server side code will pre-render your Blazor WebAssembly content and serve it to um the search engines, the various social media bots, so they get that content appropriately. Um, I see some interactions. Da, da, da. Uh, Sajin, recently completed C-sharp learning from Microsoft Learn. Now I'm confused how and from what should I learn moving forward? What are some things everyone must learn after C-sharp? Well, Sajin, it depends. What do you want to do now that you, you've learned C-sharp? Do you want to build games? Do you want to build websites? Do you want to build mobile applications? Do you want to build applications that run in the cloud? Do you want to build applications that run on little IoT devices? Where do you want to take this knowledge? What, do you, what are you interested in building? Once we know what that is, then we can recommend and point you in directions that'll get you more, more productive. Um, there's uh, on the .NET Learn page, so .NET, click the Learn tab, 
there's a series of, of blocks there for the different types of applications that you might be interested in building in various um, curriculum learning opportunities for each of those technologies. So take a look and uh, best of luck to you and let us know if you have any further questions. So we'll be going for about another 16 minutes here with open Q&A and, &A and uh, sharing a little bit here. Uh, Tamer says, I hope Blazor removes the comment entries and minifies the HTML, JavaScript, and CSS when you publish. Um, it's not interfering with your code. It's not interfering and, and th those things are, are hidden. So what are you running into there? What, what's the issue? Um, hello to you, Erwin in Chile. Uh, can you do everything in web with C Sharp? Not quite everything. You can certainly build and work with your web application, your page, your, the content that's being published on that page. But when it comes to actually interacting with the browser, if you have to interact with the browser application or uh, some of the, the features like uh, location, um, application storage, the cache inside the browser, you're going to have to reach out to do a little bit of JavaScript for that interaction. It's just not exposed to the uh, to Blazor. Um, is there a good way to create plugins for an existing app, loading a DLL on runtime which contains new Blazor pages? Um, take a look at, there's a lazy loading article on Microsoft Docs. Take a look at that and it will, I, I haven't tried it myself, but it will supposedly load on demand that extra DLL that contains those extra pages. It involves adding some extra routing into the app. But yeah, take a look at, it's called Lazy Loading, um, Lazy Loading for Blazor, I think is the name of the article. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Naveen says, scaffolding identity pages are not completely migrated to Bootstrap 5. Um, bootstrap and, pat, uh, I'm sorry, margin and padding issues. Um, that's news to me. Um, I, I would create an issue in the .NET repository. When can we expect it? I don't know. I, I would have... This is news to me. I don't have an answer for you. Sorry. Um, I'd open an issue in, in the GitHub repository for some discussion on that. Um, Lee on, on YouTube says, I love using .NET. I feel like I can achieve rapid development and deployment with .NET. Why do you think libraries like React are more popular than Blazor when Blazor is clearly better? JavaScript's been around for a lot longer. Blazor's only really been RTM for three years. Folks are afraid of committing to a new technology when libraries like React have been around for 10 years. Folks look at React and they say, oh, well, that's what Facebook uses. So we should use it too, because I like Facebook. That's a good bit of the discussion and reason around that. Um... I look at Blazor with the same um, with the same respect and interest that folks looked at Node 10, 15 years ago when Node first came out. Hey, I want to run the same language both in my browser and on my server. Same thing. I want to run the same language and runtime in my on my server and in my browser. So it's coming. Blazor adoption is coming, and as folks learn more about it, it's ramping up. So. Uh, Shawno on Twitch. Hello, big wave there. Good to see you. Lee Samuel, um, it, you're very welcome over there on YouTube. Uh, no problem, Gentile. Just want to make sure that I call that out so that folks don't get, don't get, uh, trigger happy passing through images here. Um, Marvin says, it'd be really cool if I can create a series of properly disposing components in Blazor. It's given you many headaches. What do you mean by properly disposing? Tell me a little bit about that. I might be able to add, drop that into conversation today. Marvin on YouTube. Tell me a little bit about what you mean by properly disposing. Um, mm -hmm. Andy had many Docker containers uh, that work well on Docker desktop, but I'm unable to deploy them. Uh, sorry to hear that. Um, I, I'm sorry, I can't read the Cyrillic. I'm not, I, I, can't, I don't read the language. But on YouTube, it says, Hi, is learning C++ still a good idea in 2022? Um, I wouldn't say it's your primary language that I would learn, but it's definitely something that I would learn 
particularly if you want to get into real-time interaction programming of hardware, building uh, device drivers, building operating systems, building things that need to be real-time, games, database systems, operating systems. So is it a good idea? Yes, for those things. For many other things that folks are building, not entirely necessary. Um, Paul on YouTube asks, what should I pay attention to when I choose WebAssembly or server for a new project? Depends. Where do you want your application running? How? What's the usage model for your application? Are folks going to be using your application in disconnected locations? Are folks going to be using your application where they can always be connected to your website? Um, do you do you need to hide the intellectual property that you're going to be building inside your application, then you're going to want to run it on the server. So those decisions, and we covered them last time, are what's going to go into why you would do, choose one or the other. Um, Andy on YouTube has not found any way to deploy Docker containers except for Docker desktop. Um, cloud services have ways for you to stand up registries. You can upload your container container image into the registry and instruct um, various services to download and install from there, um, including Docker Hub. Docker Hub, of course, Google, uh, Azure, uh, they all have registries that you can stand up and register your container images in. Terry on YouTube asks, 2022 for .NET Maui. You better believe it. We're planning on it. We're working on it. Um... I'm, Sachin with a repeat. Um, da, da, da. Why does no one mention Maui on Linux? Because there isn't interest for .NET Maui on Linux. There isn't the the interest and commitment level for that is it, it is too low, and it it's not something that's currently on the agenda. Folks have prototyped it. Folks have gotten it working, but it's it's not going to be part of the RTM when .NET Maui comes out. It's too much for Ed, and there's not enough. There's not enough customer interest to make it a thing. For many folks, it's just a checkbox. Oh, I want to be able to deploy it and, and send it to Linux. But are you really? No, we're actually going to run it over on our Macs. Well, who cares? Then uh, why am I building it for that? So, um, do, 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 do. hello, positive thanks to you in Sri Lanka. Um, can I organize a, a, a can the you organization about the mud blazer session? I don't like talking about specific frameworks, third party frameworks on this channel. Um, because I want to make sure everybody gets an opportunity. Um the various teams will talk about the various frameworks and share those. So how you doing, Brave Cobra on Twitch? Uh David on YouTube says I find the server and client side which versions of Blazer I'm not I had one website. I'm sorry, David, you lost me there on that question. Andy asks, is it easy to use Blazor components for mobile and the web with no changes using Razor class libraries? Yes, and I'm going to show you that today. Ahmed from Egypt is here. How you doing, Ahmed? Uh, are there things, any things like Blazor, like NGRX and Angular for state management? No. There are folks that have built components that you can share for that. Um, and we're going to get into talk more about state management next time. Um, James on YouTube asks, what are the scaling capabilities of a SQLite backed Blazor app? Do I need SQL Server? Well, you're talking about using one file to store all of your interactions. You're going to end up hitting locking situations if you're using that one file and you have many users. That's just the nature of one file being used. SQLite as a single file database is, is it is fine when you deploy it in a mobile app in a native application and you have folks interacting you have one person interacting with that database as soon as you have multiple folks interacting you're going to run into blocking and locking scenarios with that that SQLite just isn't ready for do you need SQL Server there are other databases out there you can use besides SQL Server MySQL Postgres DB2, Oracle, just to name a few. Um, RavenDB is a personal favorite that I've been using recently. Um, let me see here. 
I'm not sure what Patricio is asking there. Andy asks, do you think I can cover how to deploy Docker containers? No, not covering as part of this as part of this session, this series. Sorry, um, but it's something that I want to put on to the minimal API playlist that I that I started and published last week. So while not part of this, it is something that I do want to do over there. Uh, how you doing there, uh, Sukdeep? Um, in Toronto, as Blazor has a binding concept, is it okay to go with an MVVM pattern? Sure, absolutely. But I mean, you're going to kind of see MVVM is kind of baked in there to Blazor. There's folks that are building, uh, building more formalized frameworks for it. Um, you're trying to make files smaller uh, to make the file smaller, um, but it's already being gzip compressed when it gets delivered, and all that stuff gets compressed out as one indicator. So. Um, do, 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 do. Yeah, Sam, uh, there you go. Patricio, thank you so much for chiming in about SQLite and sim simultaneous file access. Uh, Omnasini on, on Twitch. Hello there. Joining live for the first time. Welcome. Thank you so much for tuning in. Welcome to everybody out there who's tuning in for the first time. There's a complete playlist of all of these videos pre -record, well, recorded from previous sessions. You can find it over on the YouTube, youtube.com slash dot net and look for the C-Sharp with C-Sharp Fretz playlist. Thank you so much. Is this part of a larger course on Blazor? Yes. We're going to have about six episodes here where we're going to go through and talk about Blazor. This is episode two of about six. Uh, we'll see how far it goes, what other questions we might have, and we'll, we'll uh, touch on different things and answer your questions, of course, along the way here. That's why this is so much better to tune into live so you can get your questions asked and talk to other folks in chat who might have similar experiences and can help you out. Um, make a PR for updating the template. What? I'm not sure what you're talking about. Um, yeah, Thin Doll. It's been about three years for Blazor. Um, we've got about four and a half minutes left. I'm going to try and get through these as quick as possible. Um, Bulat asks, I wonder how I can capture enter key press down event in input text field given there's already an add button um, on key down. There's a key down event you can hit. Evan Weeks on Twitch. Good morning to you. Camille uh, says, I'm learning React now and it's hard. Should I learn Blazor? I, I think so. I think you're going to uh, really enjoy Blazor. Do you need C-sharp experience for Blazor? It helps. It helps a lot. Um, you're going to be able to do a lot more when you know C-sharp with Blazor. So... How can it be three years? Blazor came out two months ago. No, no, it's been... And even then, when you go back through the experiments, it's been almost five, six years that Blazor's been around. Um, Blazor adoption is in progress. That's right. Seen a couple job ads on LinkedIn for it recently. Glad to hear that. Um, uh, Op Oppie Pulai? Hello, good day to you. I am having a good day. I've got coffee. I've got great friends here that we're chatting with and discussing. So good to see everybody. Thank you so much. Um, thank you, Patrizio, for commenting there about the enter key. Um, <laughs> PHP. Yeah, PHP is definitely a thing. Um, and a lot of folks use PHP because, oh, well, Facebook does it. Etsy uses it. Okay, sure. Um, can we build an application in Blazor that runs as a software as a service in Azure? Uh, asks Ahmed on YouTube. Absolutely. Yes, you can. Um, ASD SAD on YouTube asks, can Blazor be used with Node.js? Sure. Bla um, in fact, uh, some of the apps that I've written and I showed last time, the hats.csharpfritz.com website that shows off some of my hat collection, um, it's built with Blazor WebAssembly. It's a static web application. So I can deploy that as static HTML and DLL files. And the API behind it, I built with um, with C Sharp and Azure Functions. You can certainly deploy that and use Express and build APIs that serve that data to a Blazor front end as well. Absolutely, you can mix and match those technologies as much as you'd like. It's it's all up to you and how comfortable you are. Um, the Bra Games on YouTube asks, is C Sharp important to learn? I think so. I think it's a terrific language that you can use everywhere. You're talking to somebody whose nickname, whose screen name, is C Sharp Fritz. Of course I'm going to say yes. 
Um, Marvin, in their project, they created a DLL containing a CK editor. This one comes set up with JavaScript and needs to be destroyed when the component is being disposed. So, yeah, you can write code in the dispose to go and clear those out. Folks asked this question about Blazor the next Silverlight. Silverlight lived for 10 years, for four 10 years after it was dead. I'd love for that to be supported and continued. Go ask pe folks who wrote Angular JS apps if they're still getting support. We'll be here waiting. Um, memory issues when using large lists and objects? Well, yeah. You need, you're going to need to memory release those objects, which means, right, proper, if you have disposable objects inside of a list, you need to dispose of it. Um, curious about application development for cloud mobile and Windows, such and says uh learning sql how can you use them both together for the same that is way bigger learn question you're gonna need to go over uh on microsoft learn less than a minute left i gotta go through this tailwind blazer no sorry i'm not touching on frameworks um the data of them is still there even after disposing and clearing the list uh i can't help you unless i see the code yeah please stop spamming thank you um, does Blazor WebAssembly have access to image processing libraries such as System Drawing and others? Yes, absolutely. We've got great samples that show that. Check out Steve Sanderson had a demo where he was using uh, machine learning and image processing to fill in spots in images. Really great stuff. Um, curious about application? Uh, yeah, Sachin. That's way bigger topic than this. Um, yeah, I need to see. I, I need to see more, Marvin. I'm sorry. Uh, do, 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 do. Oh, fantastic, Andy. Thank you so much. Um, is it possible to use templates like admin LTE? I'm not familiar with admin LTE. I need to take a look, Philippe, before I can answer that question. I'm going to take just scroll through these last couple questions here, and then we'll head out. Tell the bot to put out the repeats. I wish. Um, moved your business logic to .NET standard. Awesome. Still have many references to system web. What's the best way to handle this code? You're going to be rewriting it. References to system web need to be need to be migrated and rewritten. So you could put an interface in front of whatever needs to be rewritten there so that your existing code is sitting over behind an interface and your new code that's going to use it in the new way from ASP.NET Core is hidden behind another interface. Once again, we're in that model where you can swap in business logic. You can swap in processing logic because this tool works in this runtime and that tool works in the other runtime. So, um, yeah, low to medium traffic websites. But once you start doing reads and writes, you're going to get whacked there. You're going to run into, you're going to run into issues because it's going to start locking the database. Oh, a PR to update the Blazor template. Yeah, if somebody, if somebody can submit a PR for that, fantastic. Open an issue first to explain what it is. Can I explain Azure SQL with Blazor? Sorry, no, not going to be getting into that today. We're talking about components. Um, we'll, uh, uh, drop me a line. Open an issue over on the repository on GitHub. C Sharp with C Sharp Fritz. And we'll, we'll take a look at fitting that into an upcoming session. Um, knowing the framework is more important than C-sharp syntax. Yeah. Um, how am I doing? I'm doing well, thank you. Deploying a Blazor app in a 100-year-old company. Ooh, good luck. Can you use JavaScript libraries with client-side Blazor? Yes, and we're going to look at a little bit of that today. Um, Blazor's much better than Silverlight. Yeah. Um, Angular to Angular 2 was painful. Yes, it was. Angular JS. All right. Uh, how you doing there, clever princess? Uh, love the drinking mug. So this used to be, check this. So um, this used to be a Penn State alumni mug. So Penn, I went to Penn State, Pennsylvania State University, and it had it had gold leaf on the outside. Nice gold leaf logo for uh, the for the Nittany Lion here, and it said Penn State alumni on it, and it washed off in the dishwasher. Like, that was pretty cheap. I feel gypped off. Oh my gosh, I feel like I ripped off there. My goodness. 
Um, how would one create a headless Blazor server project so you can decouple front end and back end? What do you mean headless? Um, hey there, Caparino. Yeah, why do we talk about Silverlight? Um, folks keep bringing it up. Folk, they, they're, folks are scared. They've they've seen the FUD from folks in other communities saying, who folks who quite frankly don't know what they're talking about, saying Blazer's the next Silverlight. You don't know what you're talking about if you're saying that. Any limitations of hu loading huge data? No, it, it disposes of thing of things as it loads data. Um, which is better, Angular or Razor? Depends. What are you more comfortable with? All right. Moving on. It's time to go. Let's get into the code. Today, we're going to be talking about components, building components. Blazor is a component-based web application framework. Your pages that you build are themselves components. Well, what's a component? What can we do with components? We saw a little bit about working with parameters, but... What else can I do with that? What and and there were questions we saw here about well I want to share that component into other locations. How do I how do I do that? How do I make that happen? And maybe we'll even talk about it. it remind me when we get to it. I have a demo where I start working with a collection of data. Remind me about um, injecting a service to fetch that data, and and I will update. I will update the demo live on the fly to introduce the interface and, and show off a service that does that. So, is there any point going into Blazor when you know any other framework? Yes, there absolutely is. So, yep, timer is up. Thank you, David. Thank you. Appreciate that. Uh, and, and yes, it does. It feels terrible when logos wash away on your mugs. So... Um, all right, let's get into this. Sorry, friends, I've got to move on. I've got to get into the content here today. I can certainly, I've, I've done AMA sessions before, and I'm happy to hang out and answer questions. Check out my Twitch channel tomorrow. I have AMA turned on all day on that, all the whole time. Happy to answer your, all of your questions over there, but I need to get into the code. We need to start building and teaching here. Switched over to the other microphone because I'm going to head over to the other set where we're going to talk and get into this. Get into the application. I've got audio working fine there. Taking a quick look. Make sure I got this. Uh, 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 one second. Okay, good. We're good there. Got the coffee. Let's head over to the other set and we can start talking about components and how we build components for Blazor. Uh, where's the button? Which button? It's not that one. Oh, it is this one. Here we go. Ta -ta -ta -ta. Heading over, doing the walk across the studio. I've got the teleprompter up and configured, ready to talk to you. Hello over there, friends on the teleprompter. I've got my .NET bot shirt on. Um, and it looks, it looks like my camera went a little bit fuzzy on me here. Um, we'll be okay. I think that's still fine. Ah, let me see. Let me get caught up on those messages. You prefer the other mic? I do too, but it doesn't go with me to the other side of the studio here. Um, all right. Bla is somebody saying, Evan saying Blazor server seems best suited to internal apps. No, I'd go the other way. Um, Blazor Server works great on larger apps, particularly with pre-rendering. So latency is really not an issue because you're talking you're talking single digit milliseconds in interactions there. Am I back in the Microsoft office? No, I'm in the C sharp Fritz office. <laughs> I'm right here. So alright, let's get into this. We're gonna talk about Blazor components today. I can even show you right let's do that so we're talking blazer components and how we can work with these of course all of this code all of the samples here if you're watching over on the youtube the tube of all thing use there is a link just below just below the video it, if you're watching the recording as well check out the link just below that'll get you into this repository c sharp with c sharp fritz um, 
you're going to want to check out Sessions Season 3, and we are on 0302 Components. The source code is here. The readme that I'm going to show you is here. And we're going to be talking about and building with this today. And we're even going to um, change up the code a little bit on the fly here. So um, let's talk about this. I don't need that one. I've already got this one. There we go. So um, I want to show you. We talked about the survey component last time. I think we can duck out and we don't need to look at that. Um, and we added a counter to the home page last time. I'm not going to go over those. You can see how they work. Let me open my um, my terminal here. Yes, I know. I know. Um, C sharp with, thank you, uh, sessions. And I want season three. And we're going to go into 0302. And see, I've already, I've already got some edits in here because I upgraded things to .NET 6. Uh, let's go into demo and I am going to .NET watch. We're gonna make changes to this code on the fly and talk through everything that happens in here so we can see how the behavior changes for us. Now, this is an application that is, really? Um, I, I guess I don't have a choice there, Firefox. Thanks so much. You were open for most of the morning. I don't know what you were doing there. Let's get into this. Let's do this. All right, scrolling down. Um, is there any way to get delete GitHub project beta because I can't find the delete button? Yes, there is. Let me refresh. There we go. All right. Um, go away. Yes, I know. Go away. All right. So we added previously. We added the counter to the home page down here. Um, I showed you the fetch data and and we talked about the survey component right there. Now, these are components. These are separate .razor files that are interpreted and can be included inside of other projects. I believe this is a Blazor WebAssembly project. Uh, let me just double check. Demo, there's my components, pages, yes. Yes. Yes, WebAssembly project. So, all right. And we we saw that these are. Um, I'm sorry. Let me let me get the chroma key tuned real quick there because it is just a little bit too much. Just a bit too much. One second. My bad on this. Not that one, this one. Just back that off a smidge. Because I was starting to disappear. That's better. There we go. Um, I don't mind that, but... Um, thank you uh, for sharing the GitHub repo. Um, all right. Uh, to, 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 yes, you can use Blazor components inside of other JavaScript frameworks. All right, so I have, right, I have these component files. When I look over here, right, I have that survey prompt that has my HTML. Please take our survey, tell us what you think, and this title parameter that's being passed in. And there it is being output. We saw that last time. But let's learn a little bit more about this. Let's expand a little bit more our knowledge of how to build these components and what we can do with them to compose and make pages. Because, right, as, as web developers, as developers, a key to our success is being able to share and reuse things that other folks have built, right? You don't want to write the same code five, six times in different places in your application when you can write it once and reuse it in all the different places. So, I've got a bunch of demos that I've linked over here in the nav bar, and we're going to walk through and learn about building a, a series of simple components that are all built around managing a collection of data. And my favorite collection of data to maintain information about is my hat collection, 
okay? It's something simple, something easy to relate to. In your situation that you might be working with, it might be, it might be um, stock of products in a warehouse. It might be information about blog posts for a blog. It might be information about videos in a video management system that you're building. Statistics for folks competing in sport. Whatever it might be, the concepts are the same. The data type that I'm using here is just a simple one so that we can talk through it and not get lost in all the business rules and logic around that thing. It's very simple um, data object for us to work with. All right. Um, can we, do we need Redux for state? No. Nope. You, you can use it. Don't need it. Um, all right. So the first entry that I have here is a simple hat display component. And I want to be able to have a hat display entry here like this with a little component that comes out that says, well, this is Fritz's blazer hat. And this is one of Fritz's hats. And there's my super C sharp hat. Stop it. I, I told you to go away. And an entry inside the card there. I'm using bootstrap cards here to output and format this data. Okay. Um, that's, that's nice. That's an easy way to format th these things. And it gives me as a web developer a uniform format that I'm referencing and outputting information about these so that I can always get that same look and feel whenever I put hat information on the screen, right? For you, for your application, you might have the same product information you want to display everywhere. Maybe there's a picture you want to include along with stock level and, and name and a SKU and, and warehouse location. Same concept going on here. Now this hat display component, I have sitting inside of a components folder over here. And it's right there. Now, why inside of a components folder? Fritz, does it need to be in a components folder? No. I use the components folder because that makes sense for me to be able to find, well, here's where I put all of my components, right? It's, it, it helps me go and locate those those components that I'm going to reuse throughout my application. Other folks will place their components inside of a shared folder down here where our layout lives. But for me, I like to place it inside of components. You can call that folder whatever you'd like. Just make it a standard. You can even, if you want to group your application so that it's grouped by business area or, or functional area and you have folder structured that way and you have components sitting next to your files, that's okay too. That if, if that works for you, fantastic. That organization will also create namespaces for those components so that you can isolate and put different ways that you present those components um, in the same data in different folders and use them separately, appropriately in different pages. Taking a look, let me get caught up here on chat. Looking for a blazer hat. No, they don't make a blazer hat. I had one made for me. How you doing there? Uh, is it is it Miney? Welcome. Hello. Um, do, 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 do. Yeah, we'll talk about parameters here in a little bit. Uh, how you doing, DJ Squared? Levin is here from the Philippines. Can I increase volume by 10%? Uh, you have volume on your side. Um, uh, yeah. I'm I'm at the same volume that I normally am. Uh, going further than just a components folder because you have if you have over 100 components, absolutely organize that as you see fit. For this project, I've got a handful of files. You might have a much larger project that has other ways that you want to group things. For um, the Clip Talk application that I've been building, I have a series of components that are all related to the store, the the presentation and interaction with video clips, and those are in a components clips folder, so that I have all of those video presentation um, components in one place, and all the other presentation components live outside that folder. So, how you organize is up to you. 
but you can definitely create subfolders to make that easier to interact with. Um, can you have a different project just for components? We'll get to that, Gentile. We'll get to that. That is on the agenda here. So this hat display component, pretty clear here what's in it. I've got a card, that, right? This is bootstrap, div class card. I've got a card header. I've got a card body. And right now I've hard coded what's in the body. This is one of Fritz's hats. But I have this name value that's being output here on that title. That is a parameter being defined right here. Okay. So when I work with that content, right? I just have hat display, blazer hat, super C sharp, and it output those right there. That is the simplest type of component that you can really create, but we're gonna build on this and we're gonna add more features and make it more interesting here um, as we go along. So, all right. How you doing there, Daz Knowles? Good to see you. So, all right, that's the, the simplest component. Now let's start introducing child components. So what if I have a card component and I want to specify my header and body as separate elements here, right? This feels like how I interact with some other HTML code uh, as I'm building my application. This is kind of natural for how I interact with some of those things. So I can create and provide child content using a, a specifically defined parameter called child content right there that will capture all of the content of my component and allow me to go and interact with that and present it inside the output I'm generating. Now, it, there is a problem. It provides way too much flexibility as you can place any content, Razor, HTML, C Sharp, inside that element here, and it's gonna get passed along and processed by the component. So let's take a look, right? I've created card, card header, card body, so I've got a card header, right? Blazer hat, it's right there. Card body, there's that. And this is one of Fritz's hats. And I've got a hello world happening down here. What's going on there? Let's take a look at that sample. So here, right? I put inside my card, blazer hat. This is one of Fritz's hats. And there's that hello world. And it's... It appears inside this card because it was part of that content. I'm grabbing all of that content. I'm saying just output it inside my component. Let me show you that card component here. And it's, it's really simple. It is a card and it just outputs the child content. And inside my code, this is this specially formatted parameter that you can use to say, grab everything else that's inside because this is called card that's inside that card element so you make a parameter that is a render fragment it's going to return a render fragment and a render fragment is a chunk of razor that we're just going to output somewhere we're just going to take the whole thing move it somewhere else so that and, and it must be called child content this is a naming standard. This is a convention that you must follow if you want to invoke this capability. Once I have this child content parameter, I can output it just like that, at child content. I can place it wherever I want, put tags around it, and, and well, I can't really interact with it. it. It's a blob of content that I'm just moving around, and we've moved it right there. So that's why when I show the sample down here, right, all of this stuff is placed inside that output. So uh, straight HTML, other tags, it just gets rendered and carried along into that output. 
and that might not be what you want. You might want a little bit more control over that. So, uh, let me see here. Taking a look, catching up on chat. Yes, there's. Uh, they, we do have learning materials that show how to do a pop-up window, a modal window. Um, this looks similar to Angular. Good. I'm glad you like that. Thank you. Um, Caparino on Twitch asks, do I prefer to use isolated CSS for components or SAS? I can go either way. Um, for the component library that I'm using in another project, SAS has been fantastic to use. Isolated CSS is pretty nice to, so that you know exactly where the, the code that affects a component works. And we're going to see that. We're going to see isolated CSS in just a minute here. Um, I'm not going to answer that question right now, Joko. That's, that's an AMA question. Sorry about that. Um, yes, with Blazor, you can share C-sharp code. Absolutely. Um, catching up here. Um, uh, what functionality does render fragment expose? Is it just two HTML string? Asks Solid Sloth. So the render fragment is, it really does contain, well, let me grab that. The render fragment itself, um, <clears throat> yes, I, thank you. You're, you're not gonna give me this, are you? There we go. The render fragment is a invocable block of content. It, it's, a, it's a pointer, it's a function that returns Razor content. And it, it really just outputs content. In, and it's called, it's interacted with by the Razor engine to output HTML, so you get all of the asynchronous interaction things here. Um, if I were to put an await in front of it, come on now. Nope, you're not going to give me this, are you? Nope. No. Um, I thought there was a way to call that, to interact with it. But Razor knows how to interact with that, and that's all that we really need to know to interact with it. Excuse me. Um, so, Render Fragment is just a way for you to carry along that blob of HTML content. Lethal Error on Twitch asks, how does one inject JavaScript? We're going to take a look at that. Uh, do I... Is the demo have... We'll see how far we get, and if we get... If I get through the other demos here, I'll touch on a little bit of JavaScript interop. Um, thank you, Michael. Glad you appreciate the hat. Uh, yeah, render fragment is a delegate. Yep. <laughs> yeah, Marvin. Um, no, you can you can call in await inside of Razor files. Um, that isn't awaitable. That render fragment isn't async here. So, all right. Um, can I have multiple ra render fragments to render there in different parts of the component? Carlos, I like the way you're thinking, Carlos. Let me show you the next demo. Let me show you the next demo. So, okay, this is a little carried away with the child contents. I can use those render fragments and actually provide enforced content into different locations. So let's combine the two and my card component can look like this. I want to output a card div and I want to have a card header, that's how Bootstrap uses this, and a card body with some content here. Now in this code I have header text that I'm outputting there, and I have child content as a render fragment that I'm outputting there. So then my code to make this appear can be the card with header text and a string 
hard coded there uh, because I want to put a string in this label for the header. And I can still use a render fragment for this body child content. But let's go a little bit further. I like where Carlos is going there. Um, let's let's tune this a little bit, right? So here's my better card. And it references these two items and uses, um, right, what's the name of it? Uh, where, yeah, the card here, right? Am I going to be able to F12 into that? Does that work? <gasps> it did. That had, didn't work for a while, but it now does. You can navigate through to the component when you F12 on one of the component names. So I've got my card and I've got this content and I've got the child content being output here. But I can add, I can tune this a little bit and actually specify card body content to output there. So if I want to have a card body element, and I think I get into that in another one here. Um, not that one, this one. Yeah, we're going to get into that in a little bit. But let's do this. Let's do this. Um, let's say I want to have another block of content here, right? So I've already got the child content of this. Um, no, it's not going to let me do this. Unless I, so, um, child content picks up everything inside of it. If I want to have multiple instances of it, right? Like I could have, uh, body content here. And maybe I want another parameter. Uh, public render fragment footer content like that um, instead of having child content there I can say body content right and then uh, isn't it isn't there like a card footer footer content right I can do something like that can't I so now inside here, I can have, right, did I call it, no, I called it body content. Right, grab that. I see you telling me that, there we go. And I can put footer, did I make it footer content? And I can do something like acquired uh, May 2019. I think that's when I got it. And if we go back over here, uh, you should have restarted. You should have restarted. Yes, I know the file changed. <laughs> there we go. So back into here, this one. And now it has a footer element. So I've combined, right? I've got more than more than one. I've got two render fragments that specify this content and that content. And I'm able to include those in a way that almost looks like separate templates, separate content blocks here that the component knows how to format and place appropriately in the output. That might make a lot of sense for your project where you may want to move things around in different presentations, right? Different layouts and things. So that's entirely possible to do with this. But if you want to just include whatever content here, you're going to want to do that with this as uh, child content. Okay. And that works. Let me catch up on chat here. Uh, yes, there is only one child content inside of a component. Um, is the term client server misleading in Blazor? No, I don't think so. 
I don't think so at all. Client runs inside of WebAssembly inside the browser. Server runs on a web server. So, um, uh, do, 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 do. what version of Bootstrap am I using? Um, I don't know. Let's take a quick peek. It is in here. CSS Bootstrap. 431 is what was deployed with this one when I built it. And I've built it and been maintaining it. I haven't updated the uh, the bootstrap version. So, because it, it just works. So, no need for me to update. Um, yes, Linux can use WASM and server-side. All of the .NET technologies that I've showed you work on Windows, Mac, or Linux. You can run WebAssembly on any web browser. Uh, no, Sebastian. Blazor is web technology. It can run on WebAssembly, can run on the server, both run on .NET. So, um, good for a survey builders page uh, that you worked. Fantastic, yeah, that's a great example of something. The reason the render fragment is able to call methods between parent and child components, trying to understand, James is asking. Um, so your render fragment is, um, can contain code that's being executed. So my card over here that says this is one of Fritz's hats, right? That should have refreshed. No, this .NET watch, uh, the card 732. Uh, yeah, I, uh, over here. Yeah, I, I, oh, that's still there. <laughs> right, get rid of these. Uh, yes. Rebuild. And there, it's refreshing. So, down here, right, I can execute code inside my card in here, right? Uh, the current time is at date time UTC now. And there it is. So, it's executing code. I can pass objects around into that render fragment and it'll get executed later. We'll see more about that in just a minute. But yes. Um, does Blazor have a keyword for required parameters? Yes, it does. So, additionally, so here, header text, I've included the editor required to indicate it's a required parameter. So if I go back over here to my sample, and if I don't include that code, Wow, what happened there? Right. Um, it's still not, why isn't it? Where did my star go? I had a star there. There we go. And I've got, I've got a warning being introduced that says, oh, we're expecting this. Now you can turn on inside your compiler, warnings should be treated as errors. Because while that will compile, ah, oh, come on. That's not behaving properly there. Rebuild this. Yeah, I've got no text here. That's not my, my component has been written defensively, so it knows how to handle that. But it really is required. And if I turn on uh, the treat, it's a, it's a flag inside the project file. If you turn on treat warnings as errors, um, it, it will break. It will fail there. But you do have the ability to turn on editor required on fields if you need that. Okay. 
There it goes. And there it is working again. All right. Um, yep, we're going to see some template stuff in a little bit. Uh, can I shrink myself to the bottom left? No, the whole point is I'm able to point and touch the code here. Sorry, that's not what we're getting to here. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. So, what's my opinion of Mud Blazer? They've done a fun, fine job building it. I wish them all the best. Um, when building forms, do you create my own components or use the pre-built Blazer form components? I use the pre-built Blazor form components, and I'll roll them. I'll potentially roll them into uh, forms that are specific form elements that contain all the fields I need for a specific model object, and reuse those. Um, rewind if you want to see what a render fragment is. Um, Is this information available in Blazor documentation? Yes, it is. Yep. Um, it's... And, and I did not include links in the readme on this. I need to go back and add links in the readme. Um, I'll take that as an action item coming out of this. Let me go back into the component demos, and let's start working with a collection. So, I have a... I have a collection of hats. Who knew? Um, so, for... I can in my razor, say for each, each in my hat collection, and just output information by iterating over it, and I'll end up with something that looks like this. So here's a couple of, a small sampling of the hats that I have in my collection. Camp Crystal Lake, of course, from Friday 13th. Friday the 13th series, Marauder's Map from the Harry Potter series, my Super C Sharp, my Philadelphia Phillies 2008 World Series hat. 2008, my gosh, it was 13, 14 years ago now. SpaceX, we know SpaceX. They send rockets up to space. Dunder Mifflin from The Office. I have a hat with the Flash logo on it. So all these, and it's just repeating, and I get that same content repeated. And it's, it's real easy for us to use those components and reuse them to show that content. And I put a little bit of CSS here so that it wraps and formats them so they're just on the page and will size appropriately with my browser. And my components don't have to think about that. They're fixed. Here's what they do. Fine, you know, that works great for me and I can lay them out however I need to. Now, this hat.collection. Somebody had a question earlier when we were in the AMA how do I use interfaces and services, and why would I introduce that? Coming up, we're going to see that here in the next. Uh, you know what? I'm going to move down. I'm going to move things around here. I'm going to go into the template demo next because we're going to we're going to take this and change things up a little bit. So if I've got a collection of content that I want to render, you can introduce templates to go with your render fragments. So instead of just having some code that says, here's a block of HTML to format, you can have some code that says, for each one of these data points, apply this formatting to that data point. So I can do something like this. I can provide a hat template component that takes a an item type in this case, I'm going to pass in a hat class object. And I'm going to have a hat collection that are the items we're looking at. So for each one of those items, I have this context that I'm going to work with. This hat content is the definition of my template. Everything inside of here is that template that I'm going to format. So I have the card with header text, and it's going to be H. H is the instance, right? This is this hat content is effectively a for each, okay? That's a big HTML for each tag. And I'm gonna say, this is the instance uh, variable, so H, so I'll say put the name of each instance in this header text, and I'll format it with this text here, acquired in whatever year. So I've got this 
collection that I'm passing in. Let me show you how that looks, and then we'll introduce an interface and a service. So this is that template code. There, I've got that on, on screen. I'll come back to that in just a second. And um, hat template, and I use the card with that. All right. So we've already seen how the card works, but we need to take a look at the hat template here. Let's dive into that. So, um, it takes a type parameter, not just any parameter that we have down here for these various things here. We'll get into that in a second. But we need to specify a type parameter up top so that it knows that we're working with a collection that has a type we're going to be passing around, we're going to need to interact with. You can clearly see a for each here for those items that we're presenting and working with. For each one of the items in that items collection, and that looks kind of weird. So down here, I have that hat content, right? I, I, I explained this here as basically a, a HTML for each statement, this hat content tag. That is this parameter. There it is, hat content. So that variable name, that property name here, it's a property, it must be a property. You can't make it a field, right? But it's a property is, no, not that one, this one, is that tag name, okay? Context comes along for the ride. This is a default tag attribute that you have here that corresponds to what this thing is. There's your type parameter, okay? So we remember our generics from C Sharp. This is a generic render fragment that takes some sort of object and it's an object of type, right? It's a specific type that we're passing in and it's being specified outside of our, our component here. And it's being received because it's been declared up there on line one in the T item generic parameter. So I'm getting a hat object passed in here because I specified I'm passing a hat object, okay? So that hat content is a template for a hat object because that's the generic parameter type. So that's how I'm able to write this code where I'm taking in H is a hat parameter because it's declared there and I can specify my template knowing that H inside of this element is a hat and I can format it however I want and I can now use the hat content property inside this component to specify where I'd like that placed. So I've got my div here. If if this is a flex display, and I think I, yeah, I set it by default to be a flex display. So I've got a div with the appropriate flex configuration here in CSS, and I'm just saying, well, for each one of the items in the collection passed in, and there's the collection passed in. In this case, my hat collection is passed in. So it's a collection of type hat, and it's just doing a for each across that. So for each item in that hat collection, well, it's a hat, hat content item. So here's where that delegate, that a render fragment is, actually lets you execute it, right? I can pass in an argument to it because it's a typed render fragment, right? Because I have that type there, I pass a type into it so that it knows here's the thing that I'm formatting with. Make sense? So now, and you can only have one type on that render fragment. So now it just formats all of them right here. Okay, that's getting interesting because now I'm passing a collection of things into a component to format and it knows how to do the formatting for me. Okay, let's, let me go to chat and then let's introduce an interface and let's introduce a service 
so that we can pass this information in. Um, do, 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 do. You have that Phillies hat, Michael? Yeah, I have the Eagle Super Bowl hat also. I don't typically wear it on stream because it's got green elements in it and it disappears on the chroma key. Um, is there a specific book on Blazer that I'd recommend? Um, I take a look at Jimmy Ingstrom's book on Blazer. I wrote the, uh, I wrote the preface to it. So, is it easy to bubble up child events? Yes, we're going to talk about event management and data binding. I think it's next time. Um, how you doing there? Spicy Thunder. Spicy Thunder? Okay. Um, what do I think about using MVC as core and having only certain parts in Blazor? Fantastic. Yep. Uh, why not? You can certainly do that. Um, I would prefer to go as much as possible one way or the other, but if there's places where it makes sense to run more code locally on WebAssembly in the browser, do it. Makes perfect sense. Uh, how do you set up server side? This will be go through hosting a Blazor client server program and setup. Um, we'll talk about hosting another time. There's instructions online. Um, Blazor server side is set up the same way as ASP.NET Core. You can package and deploy it in a Docker container or on a service like App Service or on a VM real easy. Is that child content? No, that is not child content. That's a specific element, just like I showed in that previous demo that I put together where I created the footer content. This is a specific tag, right? A specific property name here with a specific type that I'm placing. Child content is an over is kind of a catch-all that catches all of the content to present inside uh, your component. Um, generics are better, so it doesn't have to be a hat. You're right, Andy, right? I haven't specified that this is a hat. It's just a T item, and I'm formatting it here. The fact that I'm calling it hat content just makes it a little bit easier for me to remember. I could certainly call this template whatever, uh, uh, item template, right? I can call it that and replace these with item template and go back over to my demo here. And instead of calling this hat content, I can call it item template. And it still works, right? My code's refreshed. It's over here and it looks the same way. Now, I, I did also include a demo at the bottom here that outputs it as a table. So with a table tag outside of it, an item template that's a TR with the two table cells to output. And I, I turned on this is flex false, so it didn't generate that div for me that I had to find here. It just does a for each and outputs that content. It could be a helm. Well, it could be a helm. Sure. Um, are Razor components made by Razor files? Yes. How you doing there, Midori Fukami? Good to see you. Hello. She's another streamer over there on Twitch. Welcome in. How do you set up a different layout for the login page and the home page? Um... Let me see what time do we got. We got time for that. So if you want to set up a different layout for different pages, there is a default layout that's included here in the shared folder called main layout. And a layout is just another razor page. It ends with dot razor. The difference is it inherits from layout component base. With this directive, it means that there's some content here that's basically wrapping my other pages. My pages are going to be the body of this and get injected into here from somewhere. But where? And it's that little element right there, that directive on line 14, where you have at body is where it will inject in the contents of whatever page requests this layout. And I mentioned this is the default layout. Well, where does that come from, Fritz? How does this get declared as the default layout? If I drop down here to my app, this is where the routing is all configured and it wires up uh, the interaction from browser into the application. Um, so there's assemblies to find here and when it finds a location that's being requested to navigate to, it uses this found element. And there's also a not found element here, so you can output that, that 404, that file not found page, to write something like 
sorry, there's nothing here at this address. But on each of these, there is a default layout that's specified. And that, that default layout you see up here is main layout, right? We have to put a type of around it so that it gets that object and passes it in, that type. Same thing here for the not found. We're going to change the view. We're going to introduce this layout view. We're going to specify this is the layout. But if you want to have, so that's how you specify default layouts. If I want to have another layout, right? So I'm just going to copy this and let's create another layout here. And I'm going to rename this layout to Fritz layout, right? And I'm going to copy, we'll talk about this razor file here in just a second here. Paste that, and I will F2 on that. I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself here, but that's okay. So here, I want to call this Fritz layout. So up here, maybe instead of having this anchor that has the about page, I can say, Fritz's way cool layout, and um, maybe I want that. Uh, nah, leave it that way, right? And um, there's a nav menu on the side here. I could get rid of that if I wanted to. Um, really cool menu stuff over here, right? I don't know. I'm just making this up so you see there's a difference between these. So that Fritz's layout isn't in play over here. But when I do want to use it, so I was over here on, where'd it go? Six, there it is, right? So if I want to make this my, um, use my layout, and there I'm already bringing in that repository. Oh, more on that in a minute. Um, I want to say layout, and I want to say Fritz layout. And I've just changed the layout that this page uses. So... Uh, Fritz is a namespace, but use, uh, uh, yeah, that should have picked up. What? 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 You should have picked that up. Rebuild. You're not going to rebuild for me? You make me sad. Come on. There it goes. And refresh this. So now it's got in the corner here, Fritz's Way Cool Layout, and you can't see it, it's in black font up there, but really cool menu stuff over here. So this page is using that layout, but the default layouts are over here. So all you have to do to activate a different layout is just include that layout parameter. And there's more things you can do to create other sections on that page that you may want to inject other content from your pages. Um, and you do that by introducing a, uh, a section, um, yeah. So if I want to put, uh, below, below the body, right, I can put, uh, right, is it section? Shoot, how do I do it? Uh, render section, right, isn't it? Darn it. I'm forgetting how to do sections because I don't use it. Um, and now I gotta go find it. Now I'm, I'm gonna kick myself if I don't find it. Uh, blazer, layout, and sections. Dun, 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 dun. Not nested. Uh -huh. Folder or components section, no. No, no. Yeah, add a component section. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. Um, yeah. Default layout, there's that. Play layout to an arbitrary content, yep. Nested layouts, yup. Darn it, where's the section? Why am I blanking on this? No. Mm hmm, mm hmm. I'm gonna go find it later. I'm not quite sure why I can't, why I don't remember how that works. 
I will find that and get that updated in the content. Let me come back to chat, and then I want to talk about that inject of the repository. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Uh, yes, Jimmy Engstrom. That's right. Uh, started working with Blazor, started working with Razor and CSHTML files before. Cool. You can do multiple inheritance, but there is, there's a way to do a section inside of it and specify render section. It's not render body, not render partial. It's something else. It's not the HTML section tag. No, no. There's that you can do sections and specify contents in your page, go to different parts of the, of the layout. I might be thinking CSHTML razor and it's not in blazer. I'm going to have to go back and look. Um, so the question was uh, that we had earlier was about interfaces and injecting services. So let's look at this right here. I'm injecting a repository object, right? And that repository... Well, I should be able to F12 into that. Am I going to Am I gonna get that? Is that going to work? Oh, it did. Fantastic. So I have a hat repository object here that is registered here as a hat repository that I can work with. Now in this case, that hat repository has all the content hard-coded here. I also have the ability to reference the collection directly inside of my hat object. But in this case, I have a repository class. Now it's, it's just data in memory for this, but right and it has a get method here i can change this later and instead of saying return collection right i could do something that says return http client uh get from json uh i enumerable hat it's hiding behind me here and specify something like slash slash api slash hats and have it actually go get that data and return it. I haven't changed the way that my page works. I haven't changed the formatting, the display of anything. I've changed where my data is coming from and I've injected that change here in the code that's responsible for managing, working with, fetching and presenting that data. And this is easy for me to see and test here without having to go through all the user interface. It returns a collection of hats. My page knows how to present a collection of hats. I don't need to retest that when this thing changes. So that's part of the reason why we use services and injecting um, interfaces. And I could have implemented an, interf an interface here. So I had in-memory hat repository and API based hat repository and inject the appropriate one depending on where I want to get the data from. But I think I'll, I'll work on putting in those two samples here so you can see the difference between the two. Um, we've got about 10 minutes left. Let me go into the last couple items here. Does this work with get async as well? Sure it does. Sure it does. Um, I just called it, I just called it get for now. So let me show you the last couple demos here. So we worked with collections. There were some questions earlier about using SAS or CSS isolation. CSS isolation is, is enabled in this because components can have their own CSS. And you saw me bring along that Fritz layout CSS. So if you name, well, first off, it, you can include this project name style CSS in the header of your application like this. This project is called demo, so demo.stylecss in, is included in the header of this page. You can see it right there. And the content of that is a collection of all these CSS files that are included with my razor files, all bolted together with appropriate markup in there so that the content of those CSS files only apply to the components that they're named after. Let me show you. So down here I have I have car header card header razor CSS and it has dot card header should have background color sky blue. Let me go back over here. And if we go back to our components up top here, <clears throat> there's my card header 
and card header Razor CSS says, well, for a div inside this component, right? I don't have to def define the class or anything. It's a div inside the card header component. It's going to get that background color and that font weight. And you see that rendered here. So if I change that to, let's say, fire brick, because I want to make it red, I'm not even going to save it. I'm not even going to save it. I'm going to let the re-rendering come through here. Uh, oh, you dog. Let it refresh. Didn't the, the magic didn't happen for me. There they are. Right? So let's do that again. I'm going to change the color then of the font to this. And it should just update. There they go because of Hot Reload, this feature that we have with that .NET watch, and it's also built into Visual Studio for you. It just colors things appropriately for me there, right? So let's do one more. And you can see it's only affecting those components, even though I put it on a div element, okay? So CSS isolation allows you to attach that CSS to a component and only affect that component, and Hot Reload allows you to see those updates live in real time in your browser. It's really effective to help you make you more productive. Before I get into my last demo here, uh, yep, that's right, Patricio. Does it, create, does it create the CSS for each component? No, you need to create it yourself and it stitches it all together inside um, that file that was delivered to the browser. So I'll reload here, and you see app CSS, uh, demo style CSS. There it is. So this is that content all stitched together. And you see they even note which files they came from to get included there. So there's card header with that content. And you can see how it uses a little conditional attribute to format to make sure that this only applies to that component. Okay. Um, and of course, when this is packed and delivered, I believe they minify this when it gets delivered. But um, even then, right, it's getting gzip deflated with Brotly, so you end up with it, right? Where's my response header? Da, 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 da. Text CSS, and it was only, four, only 4K, nice and small. All right. So... That's cool. That's an effective way for you to organize your content that you're presenting. Um, all right. Is it possible to make use of Blazor for the now defunct end of line Windows 10 mobile or ask the other way around for desktop long-term service release versions of Windows? Yes, Blazor, uh, Blazor server side renders HTML and delivers into the browser no change needed. You can work with any browser with that, uh, as long as they have JavaScript enabled. Blazor with WebAssembly um, should work in all HTML5 compatible browsers, older versions of Internet Explorer, um, Internet Explorer 11 and earlier, so that's all of them, require a shim, which we no longer ship um, because those browsers are no longer supported. So it can be done. That shim is still available out there if you want to go dig it up and find it. It's a little block of uh, JavaScript. Um, but for browsers that are supported around the world by all the vendors, that feature is built in at this point. So if you have really old browsers you need to support, you can dig up some source code that'll make that happen. I keep getting this state question. We're going to get to state. Trust me. We're going to get there. Not part of today's session. Um, the last bit that I wanted to talk about was libraries. You can put content. You can put CSS in other libraries. Put CSS and components in other libraries. Package them and deploy them into Blazor applications. So I have another library here uh, <laughs> called Fritz Components. And I have component one Razor here. This Blazor component is defined in the Blazor components library. And this should be including, and I didn't see, it's not including my CSS for this. Why is that? That should have picked up and rendered for me. Yeah, 
that didn't get included for me. Um, what am I missing? You include it by just adding a reference into your project from your from one project into the next. So here, project reference down here at the bottom into fritzcomponents.csproj. <clears throat> but it's showing the content there, but I don't see the CSS loading. Card header, Fritz layout. Now, come on, I want to find in that file. Come on now. Right? You're not gonna... I thought I had a control F over here I could hit. Uh, that's the nav menu. Yeah, I don't see it including that component library. It should do it. I don't know why that CSS wasn't included. Um, how much time do I got? Three minutes. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Let's see. What am I missing? Oh, I know what it is. I can almost... I bet... Nope. That's right. Darn it. It should have included it. I don't know why it's not there. Because it's dot my component, my component, should have picked up and included it. And it, the fact that that CSS isn't in my output at all is what's bothering me here because I have this working in other projects. And that background is a series of stripes here. Um, I'm not going to get into the JavaScript interop. Let me do some research. I'm going to figure out what that is and I'll add some notes to this project. My time is up, friends. My time with this stream is up today, but it should include and, and make that just available to us from this library. And I'm not quite sure why it wasn't included down here. If, right, this is a race. Oh, you know what? I'm missing a tag here, aren't I? Um, no. I need to take a look. I'm missing a tag there. Friends, I gotta wrap up. We've got two minutes to go. Let me head back over to the main main desk. Oh, nuts. I missed something there. It was it, nah, assembly name style CSS is the old way to do it. It's it should be included by default for you. Um nope. It's included by default with the CSS isolation. Um, and I've got it working in another demo, so I need to go dig that up. I will fix that demo and get it working out there in the production space. Friends, thank you so much for tuning in. This has been a lot of fun. Says 39 minutes left? No. Uh, oh, that. Yeah, I didn't. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Um, because that's on this scene. Uh, there it is. Thank you so much for tuning in. I really appreciate you joining me. Um, this video will be archived. It'll be available on YouTube, so you can check it out, rewind to go through it. The source code for this, linked down below. I'm going to update some of those demos and figure out why that didn't work and include a little bit of content in that readme so that you have some information to reference on the recording. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you join me next week. We're going to be talking about, I believe we're talking about events and state inside of our Blazor components, inside of our Blazor pages next time. Thank you so much for tuning in. The GitHub link, I will grab it one more time for folks so that you can grab it. It is right there for you. Thank you so much. Those of you that are watching on um, Learn TV, We'll catch you next time. Those of you watching on YouTube, check out all the rest of the videos that we have here on the .NET channel. There's great content, not just in my playlist, but other playlists here for you to check out. Stuff from .NET Conf, from build, from years gone by, from uh, all kinds of learning materials that we have here. I hope you check it out. There's really great reference material. I've got a YouTube channel as well under C Sharp Fritz. And of course, those of you that are on Twitch, you know I have a channel called C Sharp Fritz, and we're going to set you up for a raid. Let's see who else is streaming out there. 
on the big Twitch TV network that we can get you connected with, send you over to. Those of you that are watching on YouTube, we're, we're going to drop you in just a second here. But we're going to get you connected. Let's get you connected over to... <clears throat> Let's get you connected over to the Code It Live channel. They're doing a little bit of software development today. It says Dev by Design. I'm going to send you over there. Thank you so much for tuning in. And uh, hope you have a fantastic rest of your day. We've got more content on this channel a little bit later on from our friends Mads Christensen and from the Docs team. Hope to see you then. Take care.